when you're dealing with UFOs, there's typically a word that's used to describe the study, which is ufology, or ufology, however you want to pronounce it. And so there are a lot of different people that have been involved in this field for a number of decades who try to really do good work in the research side and as best they can to provide substantiated claims that can help us as a whole find out more about this subject. And of course, aliens and extraterrestrials can mean a number of things to a number of different people. We'll get into that. And of course, UAP is an interesting term now that's being brought into modern nomenclature. Um, does anyone know what UAP stands for? It's Unidentified Aerial Phenomenon. It's somewhat of a, a term that's used in different documentation and things. So jumping into this, it's, it's something I've always been interested in. I've done what I can to really not just read books and you know listen to lectures, but really get out into the field and do what I can to find out something I can do to be proactive. And I've done some things um, like go in and come in contact with the mysterious relic known as the Star Child Skull. And this is an interesting artifact which seems to allegedly be uh, a supposedly a hybrid or maybe even an alien creature. And it's really important for us to find physical evidence that might be able to substantiate these incredible claims. And so we'll just keep this in mind throughout this presentation because some people think that the star child skull might actually be an alien. And that would be an interesting thing to come across in the lab. So you can see that maybe some of the connections there show us why people make those assumptions. And of course here is Steve Hudgens, the Director of Investigations for MUFON, the Mutual UFO Network. He's a local guy and he's holding the Field Investigator Manual. And I think it's good to show this because it's important to do good field research when it comes to these types of subjects because a lot of things can be lofty and unsubstantiated. And I've been fortunate enough to go out into the field with some uh, good friends, including here in the middle, Noe Torres. And here we went down to the Rio Grande Valley and went to fly a drone over uh, the gorge there onto from Texas to the Mexican side to look at some uh, crash sites of a downed UFO in the 50s. And we were able to kind of locate where that was there. We've also been to places like Marfa, Texas. You guys have ever heard of the Marfa Lights? Really interesting phenomenon. And there's, of course, a historical marker there. This is a picture of the lights that I took myself. And there's a lot of interesting conclusions that people make about it, or a lot of uninteresting ones, like maybe they're just cars. Well, I went out there on the 4th of July, you know, interestingly enough, and got you know, a personal light show. And it's a real phenomenon. It's a really interesting place. I would definitely recommend going out there. They have an observatory that you get to stand and look out from on a rest area. And when we talk about the lights, that kind of prompts us into another famous lights phenomenon known as the Phoenix Lights. Here we are at a conference down in South Texas in Edinburgh with Dr. Lynn Katai, an eyewitness of the Phoenix Lights. Anyone heard of the Phoenix Lights? An enormous UFO spotted in, in Phoenix. And so here's Noe Torres again uh, hosting the conference there. Interesting person and, and witness to that account. At the same event, we had Ben Henson from Factor Fake to talk about UFO disclosure and U.S. presidents. That was an interesting talk on an analysis of public statements that have been made by officials and U.S. presidents regarding the UFO subject. I bring this up because just recently, maybe a little over a week ago, on the same show that they've been doing this on, they had uh, Bush Jr. go out and make the same appearance and when he was asked about it he gave an interesting response and it'll be interesting to hear what Ben has to say and his analysis of this new one so if you can go and check that out I think it's Jimmy Kimmel live or something um, and so I've been able to talk to other interesting people this is David Marler author of Triangular UFOs and an eyewitness he worked with people like Chase Kletsky and Richard Dolan they wrote a book called Admissible about finding ways that we can substantiate and make admissible some of these incredible claims regarding things like UFOs, aliens, because it is a very ambiguous subject that we need specificity and clarification to in a lot of matters. Uh, I've met Nick Pope of the Ministry of Defense of the UK who looked at official documents on UFOs and UAP, and John Burroughs, who were both intimately involved in the Rendlesham Forest case in the UK, um, I got to go to the Secret Space Program conference 
outside of Austin with people like Linda Moulton Howe, Joseph P. Farrell, and others. Jim Mars was also present. I've got to connect with people like Alejandro Rojas of Open Minds and the International UFO Congress doing independent work. Uh, the alien hunter himself, Daryl Sims, who's looking into physical evidence of implants. Um, I've gotten to connect with Dr. John Alexander of the Department of Defense, so another official regarding this subject. Uh, civilian astronaut from NASA, Dr. Ken Johnston, who talks about lunar anomalies. Uh, Longtime UFO researcher in Norio Hayakawa here. Uh, I'm sitting with him where he took me to what he described as a secret base in plain sight in New Mexico. Um, Stan, Stan Friedman, a UFO researcher and scientist. Um, Travis Walton, uh, experiencer and uh, renowned for his story in Fire in the Sky. You guys have heard of that before. It's a turn into a movie, dramatized, of course. But I've gotten to connect with David Hatcher Childress, world explorer and uh, guest on Ancient Aliens, and experiencer Whitley Strieber, who's written Communion and a number of other books. And of course, the a father figure of ancient astronaut theory, Eric von Doniken, uh, and renowned radio to, uh, show talk host of Coast to Coast AM, George Norrie. And so this is again to just demonstrate my interest and um, connections that I've made in the field. And as we get into the alien subject, we're often um, dealing with a number of different theories, concepts that people have about what aliens are and what that really means. Some people think that they might be interdimensional beings and maybe that they've had some connection to our ancient past and there's a lot going on more so than we realize. And there are a lot of different types of aliens. I'd say that the most common ones people describe are things like the reptilians, the greys, the Nordics or the blondes and then the tall whites, things like that. These are your kind of uh, typical iconic aliens that you're now seeing in a lot of pop culture that's coming up in movies and shows. And so this is something that a lot of people are now becoming more familiar with in the general public. So a lot of people have ideas about aliens, maybe that uh, the old ways that we look at things in the world allow us to give uh, different perspectives, like maybe that the angels and demons of religions might be connected to aliens. Maybe they're time travelers. And some people make the presumption that they're all benign and loving and have this kind of understanding overall. But it could be the other side of the spectrum when we have things that are fearful, dealing with abductions and the sort. And so you have anywhere from peaceful and loving to you know, demonic and just uh, fearful and dark, things like that. You also have uh, the ideas that reptilians are, you know, taking over the government and pulling the strings and shape-shifting to look like humans and that there might be joint alien-human relations with the government and military pulling the strings behind the scenes. Lots of interesting theories and so we have to kind of figure out what we can do to substantiate some of these claims. A big proponent of the subject currently is a figure named Corey Good. Has anyone heard of Corey Good before? He shares a program called Cosmic Disclosure on Gaia, where he talks about things like the sphere being alliance and programs such as Solar Warden, which are secret space programs with the government, and disclosure movements regarding various groups of aliens and alliances. And they also have these kinds of concepts like reptilians help the Nazis build space programs in Antarctica, and while these might seem really outlandish to a lot of people, we might find that even though they seem kind of weird, that there could be something to it, such as the Nazis actually having worked on what we would think are exotic technologies, anti-gravitational devices, and things of that sort. So maybe there's not, that's not too far off of the, out of the possibility. But the consensus is that there are alliances making things happen behind the scenes unbeknownst to the majority of people. Well, when we're dealing with the nature of what we're actually seeing, when we're talking about UFOs, this can be something anywhere people describe from small orbs of light to large metallic mile-long craft. 
and anything and everything in between. There's no definitive, it's only one spaceship type of thing that people are seeing all over the world. There's so many types of things that people are experiencing. So we have to really do what we can as researchers to discriminate what it is that people are experiencing, witnessing, or our own experiences in a way that's logical, practical, and then can be verified through repeatable means through science and things of that nature.